Okay, so we're trying to figure out where this line crosses the x-axis. In other words, we're trying to figure out the x-intercept of this line. So uh, this is obviously going to be the topic for this one video. But um, if you're uh, new to algebra, if you're learning algebra, one thing that you need to definitely, definitely understand is the following. You need to know how to graph lines. Okay, that's a huge part. And uh, the word lines is often referred to as linear equations. It's a more technical uh, term, but they kind of come in this kind of flavor or format. So you got to learn how to graph lines. You got to learn how to write the equation of lines or find the equation equations of lines, which involves you um, uh, being able to calculate the slope. There's quite a bit of skills involved in graphing lines, finding the equations of lines, understanding lines or linear equations. It's a huge, huge topic in algebra. So if you're confused about it or if you haven't yet, you know, uh, feel like you've learned it totally, don't worry, don't stress. I have hundreds of videos, well, hundreds, uh, maybe hundreds of videos on my channel because I've been cranking out uh, videos for 10 plus years. But, you know, this particular problem will just help us review the concept of uh, the x-intercept which will um, also tie in to the y-intercept. You'll see this all here in a second. But again, if you're confused about any of this, you can go to my other uh, videos in my pre-algebra or algebra one playlist and uh, you know basically learn how to graph lines, how to write the equation of the line, how to calculate the slope, et cetera, et cetera, if you're confused about any of this stuff. So we're gonna get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. And I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I'm talking over 10 plus years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Now, uh, in my program, I offer um, 100 plus different math courses. So, you know, obviously, algebra, geometry, algebra two, pre-algebra, college algebra. Uh, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here. Uh, soon, but I have a lot of specialty courses, test preparation courses. So if you're studying for the GED or nursing entrance exam or teacher certification exam, uh, ACT, graduate school, any kind of specialty kind of uh, test, if you're taking some sort of test, I likely have a uh, test prep course for you. So I do a lot of research when I make all my courses. Very, very comprehensive. So again, just follow the link in the description of the video and take a look at uh, whatever the needs that you might uh, you know, be you know, searching for, okay? Now, if you are a math student, you, I must tell you the golden rule of mathematics, and that is this. After decades of teaching math, it's apparent to me those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who don't take any math notes or sloppy math notes or they got their best friend in the back of the class that takes their notes for them, and then the night of the test, they take their notes, and their best friend is left, you know, with this expression like, you know, hey, why'd you take my notes? I need my notes. When you're like, well, listen, you know, I need notes too. And then you guys, you know, have this little fight, and, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's not a good situation, right? The bottom line is you need to personally take your own notes. Now, why don't a lot of students uh, take notes? Well, it involves this four-letter word called work okay you got to work at it <laughs> it's a skill and i think a lot of people think it's optional right it's like hey i don't need to take notes uh, i have a photographic memory or it's more important to be checking my cell phone listen i get it i was a student once as well but i also paid a price for not paying attention you got to be paying attention to every little thing the teacher is saying write it all down concentrate ask questions and the better you make your notes the better you're going to do in mathematics period point blank now um, you know, if you need to improve in your note taking, which I would say the majority of you out there need to, because there's always room for improvement, um, you know, start doing the right thing. It's going to, you're going to benefit from it. Okay. Uh, but in the meantime, you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay. So let's get into this problem. Um, again, if you're not sure about lines or all this other stuff, just check out all of my uh, videos on uh, graphing lines, uh, all these different topics we talked about in my pre-algebra or algebra playlist. Okay, so we're trying to find the x-intercept, right? X-intercept. So what does that mean? Well, it's fairly 
self-explanatory, but let's just quickly review this concept. So here is a line. This is a line, okay? Or a linear equation, right? That's a more fancier word for it. But often um, times in algebra, uh, we like to uh, write a linear equations or the equation of a line in this y equals mx plus b form. So for example, y equals 2x plus 1 is a linear equation, uh, but this is an equation that its graphical representation is a line on the x-y axis. So when we're graphing lines, we like to have nice points of reference. And if you look at this, you know, with the exception of a line that goes through this point, this is the origin, okay, most lines are going to chop through the y and x axis. So here, the line is passing through or intercepting the y axis. So this is called the y intercept, okay? And likewise, right down here, the line right at this location is passing through the x axis. So this is called the x intercept. Now, Let's take a look at the y-intercept for a second, okay? Where we, we have our, our x-axis, right? So let's say this is 2, this is 1, that's 0, negative 1, negative 2. What is the x, okay, the x-intercept uh, is some x-y point, okay? Now, what is the x-value, okay, right here, right? What is the x-value? Well, hopefully you can see, well, if this is 2, that's 1, this is 0. Mm, is it 0? Yes. So the y-intercept, okay, the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, okay? So when x is 0, whatever the location there, that's going to be your y-intercept. Now let's take a look at the x-intercept because that's going to be uh, what we're talking about in this problem. Uh, what is, we have this x-y point, okay? Where is this point at? Well, where is y going to be at, okay? Let's say this is 2, that's 1, it is zero, okay? So we have some x point and y is zero. So the x-intercept is when y is zero, okay? Uh, these coordinates, right? We have a particular point. When y is zero, we're talking about the x-intercept. And if you ever forget, you know, uh, confuse these, is it, oh, is it x zero or y zero? Just draw your doodle, doodle yourself, sketch out a quick little uh, graph like this and just look, you know, be like, oh yeah, this point is... I have some x number and my y is 0, okay? And then over here, oh yes, y, x is 0. I'm going to have some y number. Okay, so how do we find the x-intercept? Well, we're going to set y equal to 0, okay, in our little equation and solve for x. That's what we do, okay? So again, if you get confused here, that's how we do it. So the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0, so let's go ahead and figure this out. Okay, so we're looking for some x, y point, but the specific point, again, the x-intercept is where y is equal to zero. I already know that, okay? And now I need to know where uh, x is, right? I'm trying to figure out this part of the problem because I already know that y is zero at the x-intercept, okay? So when you're doing this, I'm like, all right, if I know y is zero, what is x? Well, I'm gonna plug in 0 for y and solve for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So that's 0 for my y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 5. So yes, this, is, um, this part of the problem is going to involve you um, having some basic equation solving skills. So you might want to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can finish this part of the problem out. But I'd like to see if you can solve for x. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do this now. What do I need to do? I need to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, and I get negative 5 is equal to negative 2 thirds x. Let me go ahead and give myself some room here. Now, if this confuses you, uh, oftentimes the students, they get a little con uh, confused when the variable's on the right-hand side, okay? Just remember, in an equation, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, and the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, so you're perfectly fine by rewriting this this way, negative 2 thirds x is equal to negative 5. And it's just more customary uh, to have that variable on the left-hand side. Okay, so I need to now solve for x. So what do I need to do here? Okay, I want to get x by itself, right, a positive 1x. That's my objective here. And hopefully, 
you've been watching my other videos on how to solve basic equations, but basically what I need to do is I need to multiply this side by the reciprocal, okay? So what's the reciprocal? I flip this fraction upside down, so that's three halves and it's negative, so I need to uh, have a negative sign here because a negative times a negative is gonna be positive and three halves times this negative two thirds is a nice positive one X, okay? So we don't write one X, just, you know, one X is equal to just X, okay? So when I do this multiplication here, right, this is going to be X, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to solve for X. However, uh, again, if you've been watching my videos, uh, and hopefully you have been, or you will be uh, um, solving basic equations, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. So I have to multiply a negative three halves over here on the right-hand side. Remember, you gotta always keep this equation in balance, all right? So whatever you do to one side, as long as you do the exact same thing to the other side in an uh, equation, you will get it right. Okay, so now you have negative uh, five times negative three halves. Uh, let's just see how well you know your fractions. Again, if you don't uh, remember fractions, I got tons of videos on fractions. Just again, go into my pre-algebra playlist if I put most of my stuff on fractions. But again, um, this is, we can always write this a number over one, okay? Like if I'm like five, what is five as a fraction? We just put it over one. Now I can see that denominator right there. And uh, I know that you remember, all we need to do is multiply the respective numerators. Negative five times negative three is, of course, gonna be what? A positive 15. If you said negative 15, you need to review positive and negative numbers. And then we got one times two, which of course is two, and that is it. We'll just leave it as 15 halves. That's perfectly fine. No need to change this into a mixed number. Okay, don't go like two goes into 15, seven, 14, da, 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 da. Um, you need to know how to do that, okay? As long as your answer is reduced, most teachers are gonna give you fully credit, full credit for it because I've seen probably, you know, oh, maybe at least 50,000 times <laughs> over the course of teaching where a student has the right answer here, they'll go and change it into a mixed number fraction and then they make mistakes. They'll make an error over here and then they'll turn in their answer and it'll be like oh, the wrong answer, like three and one fourth. And then I gotta like mark their, uh, you know, problem wrong. And then they do this kind of thing, you know, they're like this. And and I'm like, well, you had the right answer, okay? But you took the next, you, you weren't listening to me, you weren't paying attention, you weren't taking notes. And they're like, hmm, maybe he does have something about taking notes. And they start taking better notes. And guess what? Their grades just start going up exponentially, okay? So listen to me, but again, always, uh, listen to your teacher and if it's a test or a quiz if there's specific ways they want their answer um, then you know write it in that particular manner all right so we're not done yet we have x is equal to 15 over 2 so we know that y was 0 so we have 15 halves 0 is the uh, x-intercept for this line okay that is the x-intercept 15 halves over 0 uh, and uh, basically, you know, at this point, you should know um, how to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, okay? We talked about how to do that as well. It's the same procedure. We're just going to um, plug in 0 for x and solve for, for y. And, you know, it would be much easier because just look right here. Where is the y-intercept? Well, this is super easy. If I plugged in a 0 right there, okay, and to solve for y, that 0 just takes that whole thing out. And that is 5, so that would be 0, 5. This point here is the y-intercept. And you would know that already by looking at this number because when you have a line written in y equals mx plus b form, which this line is, this is the y-intercept. Okay, This is called the slope-intercept form of a line. And, you know, again, you know, what, you know, these topics... When you learn something, don't just try to memorize it, okay? That's the worst way to learn anything. Don't be like, yeah, let me see, da, 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 da. okay, I, I can do these problems. It's this step, this, this, this step. Now, try to comprehend it. Try to assimilate the material. And I know that's not easy. Uh, that's why you need to do constant review, okay? And that's my job is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way and keep you excited about um, algebra and beyond, okay? Because I want you to learn as much math as you possibly can, because the more math you learn, the better off you will be 
in your future endeavors. Okay, so if you like this video in some way, please consider smashing a, that like button. That helps me out, and I would certainly like that. And again, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've already told you where you can find a lot of additional videos on this topic and others, other uh, related topics. Again, linear equations, huge topic in algebra. You really have to master this stuff, okay? Um, you know, in terms of an algebra course, all this stuff right there takes up at least two to three chapters. It's a huge amount of what you need to know, and it's carried on in future topics. So you just absolutely have to really know this stuff, okay? But no panic, you know, you're going to be good to go. You're going to be just fine. Just check in on uh, my videos, and if you need real, real serious math help, then you definitely want to check out uh, one of my courses, like my algebra course, okay? All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematic, uh, mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.